Hello, this video will cover the vocab for sections 1.2 in geometry. Uh, please remember I will be going uh, quickly through the vocab. It is your job at this time to be writing down the vocab into your notes as I go. Um, if I'm going too fast for you, by all means, pause the video, rewind the video, uh, do whatever you need to do to get these into your notes. And please make sure you're paying attention, not just spacing out and mindlessly writing things down. So, let's go. The first thing we need to talk about are what are called undefined terms. Now, undefined terms in geometry are really the building blocks of geometry, the, the, the basic structures that everything else is based around. And, of course, the most basic of the basic structure is the point. Um, a point is indicating location. It has no size. It is just the location. We know where it is, but there's no size to it. And we can draw a point, of course, since we can't draw something with no size, we draw a point as just a dot. Okay, so that dot represents a point, and we label points with capital letters. So they already have point A drawn there, I just drew in point B. Um, if, you know, you never want to use lowercase letters or anything like that, uh, geometry has a set of notation that we use and we need to make sure that we're using the proper notation at all times and for a point we use capital letters. The next undefined term is a line. A line is represented by a straight path that extends in two directions without end and has no thickness. Again, because points have no size, therefore a whole string of points is going to have no thickness. Um, a line will contain infinitely many points. Now, a couple of things to know about a line. First off, we can name a line. Uh, we can name a line by just grabbing two points that are on the line. So, for example, in this diagram, we have our two points A and B, and so we could name this line AB. Um, of course, there's no re rhyme or reason to the uh, order of that. We could just as easily name that line BA. Um, we do say line we do say line when we read that name. Um, if there was some other point on there, let's say I have another point here and let's call that C, well then yeah I could call this line a C. but please notice I do have to have that symbol on the top. That's how I know it's a line. That symbol is extremely important. Okay, so that is part of our notation. Points are capital letters, and now to write lines, I use two points and the line symbol. There is another way of naming a line, and that is with a lowercase letter, like that L sitting up there. Um, that lowercase letter is then if I want to talk about the line without really describing any of its points. Um, I like to describe that as um, talk about the forest rather than describing the trees. Okay, so if I'm going to name it just by a letter, a single letter, we use lowercase letters, and I just simply say, in this case, line L. If I'm listing it, yeah, I could just say L. The third and last undefined term in geometry is called a plane. Now, a plane is, think of it as a whole surface of points. Um, it's a flat surface like the top of your desk. It extends on forever um, in two directions, uh, so length and width. Um, it has no thickness, again, because points have no size. So, we can name planes really in two ways. Um, we do use capital letters to name a plane, but notice that point P up there doesn't have, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said point, that letter P up there doesn't have a dot next to it. So therefore, that is actually not a point. P is actually describing the plane. And so I could name that plane P. Now, I could, of course, use points to name a plane, but we got to make sure that the points are not on the same line. Okay, you got to make sure that the plane has those points on them, but the points are not on the same line, in which case we could name that plane ABC.
Once we have our three building blocks of geometry, the points, lines, and planes, um, we can then start actually defining terms. Okay, um, We define terms using previously known language or pre previously known terms. So, for example, collinear points. We now know what a point is, and so now we can talk about, well, what does it mean by collinear points? So, collinear points lie on the same line. Okay, linear means line. Okay, um, so for our diagram here, I have these three points A, B, and C. They are all on that line, and so A, B, and C are collinear. But point Z sitting here is not on the same line as point B, and not on the same line as those three points together. So therefore, A, B, and Z are non-collinear, not on the same line. We again know what a plane is from our uh, undefined terms, but we can now talk about coplanar. So coplanar figures are figures in the same plane. Now figures could mean a point, it could also mean a line. They're just any geometric shape that's in the same plane as another geometric shape. They are then coplanar figures. So looking at our diagram here, I see that they're trying to represent a plane here, okay, and everything here is then, you know, assumed to be points or lines on that plane, except this guy here, okay, that guy there is actually passing through the plane, okay, if you think of the uh, plane as being the top of your desk, this line is then going up and down through the desk. So, looking at this, we can see that point C and line AB are then coplanar figures because they are in the same plane. Um, but all the points A, B, C, and Q, A, B, C, and Q are non coplanar because point Q is not in the same plane. Next is the term space. Space is, we're not talking necessarily about outer space. Space is just the set of all points in three dimensions. So think of all the air around you. Think of everything that's in the room around you. Um, all of those things are located in space. All points in three dimensions. And there really isn't a diagram for space. I mean, if you really wanted to attempt to do a diagram, the best I could do would be to draw a three-dimensional box or cube and just say that that cube extends on forever in all uh, directions and all the points that are inside the cube are then all the points inside space. But that's not really the best representation of it. Just think about everything around you as being in space. Then we have a segment. Now again, we had to know what a line was in order in points in order to know what a segment is. So a segment is part of a line. It consists of two endpoints and then all the points between them. So in our example here we have point A and point B. Those are the endpoints of our segments. That's where our segment stops. And then we do know that there's going to be points in here. Now we don't know what they're called, but there are infinite number of points in between A and B. We do need to know how to write a line segment, how to name a line segment. And the way we do that, very similar to a line, is that we use the points, the end points in this case. We can't, we can't use any point on the line segment. For example, if I have this line segment, let's put another point on here. So X, Y, Z. So if I have that line segment, there is really only one way to name this line segment. And that's by using its endpoints. Okay, that's line segment XZ. Um, now technically I, I was wrong, there are two ways of naming this, just like they show here. You can use the endpoints, but again, it doesn't really matter what order you name the endpoints. Okay, the order doesn't matter there. But what does matter is again, just like with the line, you have to have that symbol on top showing that in this case it's a line segment.
Okay, and all it is is just a bar across the top. Next, we have a ray. A ray is part of a line that consists of one endpoint and then all the points of the line on one side of that endpoint. So, what are they showing us here? Well, what they're showing us is that if we can imagine that we started with that entire line, and let's make this again that line AB. So we started with an entire line, but to get the ray, we just said, all right, I want this as my endpoint, and then I want all the points that are on one side of that endpoint. And that's what then makes a ray. Um, rays can be directed in any direction, doesn't matter which way the ray is pointing, but what you do need to know is that naming a ray is very specific. Anytime you name a ray, you always start with the end point, and then you pick another point on the ray. Okay, and the symbol for a ray, similar to a line or a line segment, is just going to be that right there. It's just like an arrow pointing to the right. And that arrow always points to the right. If I have a ray that goes in this direction, oops, one too many endpoints, there we go. And let's say this is ray XZ. Okay, I always start with naming it by its endpoint, and then I pick another point on the ray. But naming it is always done like that. The arrow always points to the right. Um, by the way, if I had another point on here, Y, ray XZ and ray XY are the exact same ray. They're the exact same ray. They start at the same endpoint and they go in the exact same direction through the exact same points. So it's the same ray. Now, if I had talked about ray YZ, ray YZ, that is a different ray because ray YZ starts at point Y and goes in the direction of Z. And so it doesn't have anything to do with that uh, line segment between Y and X. So that would be a different ray. Opposite rays um, opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint and form a line. So the key thing here is that they have to share the same endpoint. Okay? If I had a line with just a whole bunch of points, and I'm not even going to bother naming these points at this point, and I say, all right, I'm talking about this guy here, that ray, and I want to talk about this guy here, that ray. Those are not opposite rays. Okay, those are not opposite rays. It's not that they're rays that go in different directions. Okay, opposite rays share a common endpoint. So in this case, in this diagram, we have ray CA, which they talk about right down here, ray CA, and ray CB. Ray CB goes over this way. So they share the common endpoint C, and together they form a straight line. The next term is intersection. Of two or, the intersection of two or more geometric figures is the set of points the figures have in common. So, um, taking a look at this diagram, we have two lines. We have line R, which is right here. There's line R. Notice it's labeled with just a little lowercase r. And we have line s. And again, labeled just a little lowercase s. Again, please remember, r and s are not points. They're lowercase. They are describing the lines. But these two lines intersect. They cross each other. Where do they cross each other? Right there at point p. So point p is then the intersection of these two lines. 
and we will learn that intersections don't have to be just a point because notice it does say it's the set of points well a set of points could be just one point or it could be a line or it could be a plane it could be um, any of our undefined terms those those three building blocks of geometry our last definition for today is going to be a postulate or an axiom now these are put together because actually they mean the exact same thing postulate axiom they are synonymous they mean the same thing so a postulate or axiom is an accepted statement of fact um, it's just something that we know to be true okay we're gonna learn later that it's actually something that we can't prove it's just it, it is what it is so um, postulates like undefined terms are the basic building blocks of the logical system in geometry there's these are the fundamental things that we just know okay so um, postulates and axioms are just accepted statements of fact um, an example I like to use on this is like a color um, pick a color blue green whatever but you know what blue is or you know what green is because somebody told you what blue or green was um, that is how we know it's blue that is how we know it's green um, that is then a postulate uh, because you could go through and say alright well blue is because of so whatever wavelength of light makes that color blue because we, we now know enough science that we know that light is what makes our colors but what if somebody's colorblind and they can't really see that color blue or they really can't see that color red does it make it not blue or not red no um, it's just it's a fact we know what red is we know what blue is we know what those colors are um, because we were told what they are even though there are other facts around it that uh, uh, we doesn't help us prove what it is one way or the other we, we have to see color to understand that color alright so those are postulates things that can't be proven just accepted statements of fact